we put our telephone number at the Capitol in all the the little newspapers we could find, and we set up a phone uh, audio phone system every Friday with the Chamber of Commerce in Tillamook and one in Pacific City, and then eventually one in Nahalem, and we do uh, a, a speaker phone conversation on Friday with the folks if they came in uh, to talk uh, or to listen about what happened in the legislature. But, of course, this was way before emails and other ways of communicating. And an interesting thing in the House that people these days find unbelievable, there was a bank of telephones in the back of the House chamber. And when since we had to work right on the house floor and we had a filing cabinet over on the north side aisle, we just worked right at our desk. And if we had an incoming phone call, that uh, especially if we thought it was from uh, folks in our district, uh, uh, we'd, we'd scurry back there and get in one of the little booths and, and talk, because we had no office. And uh, the uh, floor staff would yell in their loudest voice, especially if members were working at their desk clear up in front by the uh, the speaker's rostrum, uh, Representative Jones, telephone. And uh, so you'd go back to talk to your people in the back part of the room. The bill was a half page long. It it was one of the shortest bills that I had seen. And I looked at the bill and it says that lands along the ocean shore uh, shall be taken by prescription in the name of the state for public use. If you use someone's property that's not yours, uh, real property, and you used it openly, notoriously, and continuously, as the law reads, for 10 years or more with no objection from the owner, you could acquire rights to it and ownership of it. And I knew about that, excepting that I didn't know that that a government could do that especially with so many titles on the Oregon coast where people's property read uh, from uh, mean low water to mean high or the average high water. And I didn't see how in the world a bill like that could ever pass. There was a motel operator at Cannon Beach or Seaside uh, that uh, whose title uh, had a motel, and and his title read to mean low water, and there were rumblings that the the state may move to acquire the lands, and he fenced the the beach off clear down into the the wet sand area and put up signs that says. This is for our motel clients only. And that's what infuriated Governor McCall. And it, it I think, created the first bill, 1601. And there was a scramble then to, to try to prevent anything else like this from, from happening. And it called attention to it. Otherwise, Oswald West in 1913 had already claimed the beaches public, but only only the wet sand portion mainly and mainly for highway travel, wagons and those early vehicles. Constituents and, uh, and other people were pleading for a beverage container law and deposit and that was on top of of the unsettled beach bill yet and and so it led into 
another of the four, three or four nationally recognized uh, issues that we dealt with all in a span of eight years of legislative activity uh, going back for a century. I introduced the first bill at the request of Richard Chambers, uh, who's well recognized in history these days. He wanted me to come down to the intersection in Pacific City as fast as I could. Uh, the intersection was covered with broken glass and, and cans and, and bottles and not much plastic in those days, but it was an absolute disaster. And so at our, was our beach at the Cape. Uh, uh, kids were stepping in broken glass a lot and around every campfire. How the, everybody just left their cans and bottles and didn't take them back anymore. That whole thing was changing to single use. Uh, no deposit, no return was the mantra of uh, the times. And, and people weren't taking uh, those things back anymore. They, and it's creating a careless, wasteful society. The most important thing, it wasn't the symbolic beginning of bottles and cans, it was recycling. In the beginning, it, it was what I saw on the beach. Here, when we were taking our, our boats every morning to go fishing and, and, and just junk all over everywhere, and most of them were containers. It, it was pretty obvious that if 80% of it was bottles and cans, that you ought to deal with that first, and, and maybe if people were gonna pick those things up to take them back, it didn't make any difference whether, uh, whether uh, you you wanted the the money back for the container. It was the thought that while some people are picking those up for the five cents, there are others that are going to say, I don't like that there either. I don't need the five cents, but I'll go along with this thing. And and it 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 was a psychological thing that happened with that that got people to thinking. I don't like that crap on the side of, uh, on the beaches, uh, way down in the canyon where you were fly fishing. Uh, it wasn't just roadside litter. I wanted to involve people more than money into restoring our fisheries. It, it's a little akin to the same thing that happened with the bottle bill. Instead of paying employees to pick up roadside litter, why don't people do it? I applied the same thing to fish rearing and fish propagation and streamside cover uh, and water quality. Uh, a submerged submersible lands entered in in here that I was on almost every committee for 20 years. They, all these were natural resource areas where I thought there could be improvement, but people had to help do it. And so I introduced a, a bill along with Senator Bradbury that created the Salmon Trout Enhancement Program, which has worked very well. That's an example of, of how I thought the environment could be improved that way, and the STEP program is one that I was very proud of. The forest products industry and, and the state forestry department and most environmentally uh, environmental groups at that time that dealt with uh, state and federal forests agreed on the language of a bill that the, the some things needed to be done with the old ways of how we treat 
our streams and rivers and our watersheds. And so Oregon became the first state in the nation really for a comprehensive forest uh, uh, planning program. We didn't think it was that significant at the time, but that was 1970 and this is 30, 45 years later. The mechanics of that original bill were never much amended in 45 years. I suppose that says something about legislation. If it goes that long and, and there hasn't been enough criticism of what you did to amend it. In the beginning, I thought that Democrats are on one side and Republicans are on the other. This is easy, especially coming in in 65 and I was in the majority and that was a shock, but a, a happy surprise. And so all I had to do was be a Republican and everything would be fine. I, I really had trouble finding a Democrat bill and a Republican bill and, and, and labeling people as, as a person's ideas are no good versus this one who always has good ideas. What does partisanship have to do with most of these issues? Name one. Name an issue that's all partisan. There's any number of things you can do to help in the community and you don't have to give money. There's just so much room to work through your school or your church or your civic organization and do that. And, and, and don't uh, sit at the coffee shop and gripe about everything that's wrong. There's a place for everybody to move if you want to, whether it's downtown Portland or, or Cloverdale. I, there's a, a place you can go to make a change.